god afton and welcome to Internafton with me, Jarkus of Hiddenstall. And today we will be shortly, or uh, in a quiet time, uh, small time frame, go through the previous episodes of meditation that are in Swedish, but we'll do them in English. So I've looked through the videos and I've taken some, you know, notes about what I should be talking about today. And today, we got that old Amsi going. Not saying. Very good. And we will be continuing, continuing from last time, where we did the 63rd, 63, Route 63, to Skolvin. Now we're taking it back to... I don't quite remember the name. The place after this. But of course for this we need the seal code. Which I will simply bring up immediately. There we go. Join it in and then well let's go in here and grab it. And let's see route 63. That's gonna be 36, is that right? Uh, is it six three one? There we go, Collatia. Before we take off, let's begin with the first talking point. To meditate with purpose and or focus. So what does that entail? Right, so when you are meditating, just move this to the correct position. When you are meditating, you have to have a reason, right? What is the purpose? And... There we go. Sorry about that. Where is it? Uh, yeah. Turn it off. There we go. And there we go. Probably should put it into drive as well. Seems like a good idea. And then they're off. So, meditating with focus. When you are meditating, it's very important to be focused on, you know, the actual meditation part. So if you're doing a simple breathing meditation and uh, you know, just as a quick note before I start talking about everything, it is, all of this information is a repeat of previous meditation uh, videos. So you know, there might be some corrections as well, but other than that, it's just a repeat of what's already been said. Anyway, focus. When you are meditating or something, let's say, for example, breathing meditation. Uh, breathing meditation, you know, real simple. You have the correct posture. And you begin to focus on your breathing. So, let's begin with a little exercise then. We're going to do a breathing meditation. In and out, in and out. And that is the focus, right? I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm focusing about just breathing. That's important, right? So that's, you know, a quick start, right? Focus when meditating. But 
But now, what is meditating, right? Is it focus? Well, meditating is a lot about awareness. Get a little lag going. So when I'm doing this breathing meditation, when I'm putting the focus on breathing, I'm actually putting my awareness on breathing. Not only am I, you know, realizing and focusing on my breathing, but I'm becoming aware of it. The existence of breathing within my body. And this awareness is sort of the core uh, principle, I guess you'd call it, of meditation, right? It's, well, it's like the main idea of it all. And, you know, there is multiple things you can be aware of at the same time. We're coming in real hard. Ay, 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 ay. As you see, I was not aware of our speed. Anyhow. So, simply, you know, meditation is awareness, which is focus. And you know, this awareness has different tiers or levels whatever you might end up calling it A little drink here and I, I like to put it into four tiers and the first tier that's gonna be uh, what I'm calling the Inner awareness. You, you coming on? Right, get on. So the inner awareness is stuff within your body that you can be aware of. Or, you know, the great example is the breathing. Another one is blood circulation. Uh, it can be, you know, your stomach your thoughts I mean anything within your body really how do you feel inside and then the, there's the second level which is how do you feel outside your body right your skin the temperature uh, dryness oiliness whether your hair is standing up you know every hair has their own muscle how it feels. Shit. You know, how your head feels, hands, legs, what position are they in? Are you slouched forward, leaning? Are you relaxed, excited? All that stuff, right? And then we go over to tier 3. That is awareness of your surroundings. My mic, my smartphone, that is the camera, my movements, the table, the clothes, the hair, earphones, the sounds, everything around the background, the vacuum, all of that. And then you have the stage four and five, which is the area outside, or uh, like 
the surrounding of your surroundings. What is surrounding my room? Well, it's the apartment and the outside. You know, the land outside, right? And I... Yeah. That is, you know, level 4 and 5 awareness. But then you might ask, how can you be aware of all that? Well, it's not about being aware about every single detail, right? It's about being aware of the existence, the form, the shape of the outside and the outside's outside. And, you know, I, I might take it to the extreme. I'm not a master. So I'm only, you know... Taking in as best as I can. So I might begin with, you know, simply within my body. I might, you know, be aware of my respiration. You know, slow down a bit. Get to know your respiration. And then maybe the blood. Know. Be aware of my heart and its function, its existence. And you know how it behaves, my skeleton, where it's at, how it's placed, my legs, you know, how, the, how am I seated. And then, and then we're already coming to the second level, heat. Temperature in general, humidity, moisture, dryness, the beard, the hair, clothes. And now we're coming into the third level. I'm being aware of my, you know, table, mic, the TVs that I'm playing on, my setup, the recording. And you know, there's a bunch of stuff on my table, but it's you don't have to be aware of all the singular items, right? It's more about being aware of the form or shape. So what's the shape of my table? Well, you know, it's quite clear. It's sort of this uh, half circle around here and it's just like a regular rectangle along the rest of it. And I'm aware of that shape. I don't need, for now at least, I don't need to describe it in any way. I just need to be aware of its shape, right? And then anything on top of it, well, some items I might be more aware of than others. So the microphone is, you know, it's a staple piece on the table. It's always been there. I always use it for communication, right? But then there are things that don't usually belong here, right? Like is uh, Capri Sun, right? It's not always on here, but I'm aware that there is something Capri Sun shaped on the table around, you know, this area. And then there's some, uh, like, newspapers over there and stuff like that, right? And I'm aware about the shape of it all. There's some items over here. There's a light over here that is turned off. There's the button to turn on the light right here. There's a cable over here. I got some chips over here. The sofa, I'm aware of it. There's some pillows around this area. You see, it's not about the exact form or shape of every single item. It's about the general shape of, well, you could say larger items or common items or anything like that. So, you know, I might be aware of the, the big TV in front of me and the, you know, shelf it's sitting upon or desk or whatever it might be called, cabinet, I believe, and the singular cabinet doors. But there's, I'm not going to be aware of every nook and cranny and how every item is placed within the drawer. I'm just going to be aware of the shape. So when I'm meditating, 
about this the space around me. I'm aware of its shape, its temperature, humidity, its air, the quality of it, and the feeling that it brings me when I'm inside it. And being aware of the space. And then there's the space outside my space. And this space is the outside space. Or, you know, the corridor in the apartment block. And how can I be aware of this, right? Well, I've been outside. Crazy, I know. And I've been in, you know, the apartment and I've seen a map of the area. So there's still you know, some information that I have. I'm not, you know, I'm not going outside to see what I should be aware of. Instead, I'm using what information that I do have to be aware of my point in the universe, right? It's about being aware of your existence and where that existence is. And there's no particular reason for it. This is just one way to meditate. So being aware of, you know, the apartment, the shape of it, the air outside, you know, maybe it's raining, it's cold, windy, anything like that, right? The entrance, I'm aware of it, you know, the look of it, the ground, what it's made of, the grass, the trees, the cycle stalls that we have or a cycle bike i guess you would call it bike parking uh, for cyclists and the the smaller houses they use for uh, laundry machines and stuff like that the opposite house the general area of this entire place and then you know my place on the earth my place in sweden then we, you know, keep zooming out like that. And as you keep doing it, you have to generalize more and more of the space. So it's kind of like a gradient like that, right? So in my internal space, I can be very focused on each single detail. You know, when I take a breath, that's the entire breath. There's no, like, generalization there. But as I keep going out the different levels I have to generalize the space and there's a good reason for it right there's no real reason at least in my view that you would need to be aware of entire space and all its intricate details right you'd only need to be aware of the form of it Okay, okay. Uh, I think I've over explained it again, but it's sort of simple, right? And then another thing I brought up in one of the meditation videos is the view on thoughts. How do you meditate on your thoughts, right? Well, it's actually quite simple. Feelings and thoughts are things that come and go, right? And being aware of things that come and go is like being aware of a road. Let's, let's imagine for a second, right? You are in a crossing and you want to go to the other side. Let's say the other side is, you know, it's your destination. And in the mind terms, it would be maybe you're angry and you want to resolve that anger somehow. That is the destination. That is the other side of this path. But to resolve this anger, there's a lot of issues that you need to take care of. 
And these are the cars passing on the road that has the crosswalk. So how do you pass... How do you walk on the crosswalk without getting hit by the cars? Because they won't be stopping for you. Or maybe there's a way you can make them stop for you. Let's get into that, right? So, you have an issue that needs to be solved. And then you'll get thoughts like, Maybe you're angry because your dog ate up your homework. You know, classic American movie example. And imagine this is a real situation you have to deal with. Well, you might be angry, you might be sad, you might, you're might you gonna have an emotional reaction in this case, right? You might not always have that, which is also in the reaction. No reaction is still a reaction. I feel like I've taken the wrong turn, but we will see what we will see. And uh, you'll have a reaction. And that reaction is one of the cars. Boom. Car flew by. That is your reaction. This one Hello. Stuff. Hello. So a drive a car drives by and ah oh, now you can't cross the road, the car's driving by. You could try to walk out, but then you'll get hit. Which means that emotion will be heightened. And then you'll probably die, but example example. So you let, so what you do instead, right, instead of walking on the crossroad and getting hit by the car, is that you view the car. You see the car coming. You are aware of its existence. So, oh, dog ate up my homework. I, I want to punch dog. That is a car going by. You see that feeling, that thought, and you just be aware of it you're just gonna be aware of it and that is gonna lead you know in most cases i i would believe at least for you to make a more rational thought by being aware of this feeling you're taking an action to view it in a more real way instead of uh, emotional or another way that we might not think of and you might have many more emotions but by being aware of all the cars going past you can find the path that lets you walk across that isn't gonna make you hit any of the cars it's like uh, one of the masters that I've been watching that, uh, you know he says blah, blah 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 that is your mind right it's just going off with different feelings thoughts and emotions by looking at it you know looking at your emotions, looking at their blah, blah 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 you will let those emotions be. Let them be for what they are, emotions, right? There's no reason to take any actions on them, there's no reason to make any reactions on them. Just be aware of them. And they will eventually go away because they don't have anything fueling the fire so to say oops yes.
and uh, just like that you can meditate with your surroundings you can meditate with your emotions you can look at you know something simple it's like oh what have I done today you know be aware of all the things you've done today or even something smaller like after a uh, gym or you know training anything like that something you know maybe more exhausting be aware of that exhaustion that workout and uh, as a beginner uh, like meditator uh, workouts and you know being outside it's a very great way to get into meditating because after a hard workout where you're sort of out of breath it's very easy to meditate because there aren't that many factors going on in your head it's in fact extremely easy to just breathe meditate when you're exhausted because not only are you focusing on breathing but your body is focusing on the breathing already so it makes just a little bit easier Now, if we go back to meditation for a bit, and we'll end on at meditation as well. When you're meditating, there's a certain position, or how should I say, certain way that you should sit when you want to do longer or, you know, just meditation anywhere. So I'll explain it on the next stop right here. But be aware that you, there's no real, like, perfect position that you need to sit in for meditation to work generally, right? Because there are things that are called, like, walking meditation. There might even be dancing meditation, for all I know. Although a bit hectic maybe yeah, now I know for sure I've taken a lot of wrong turn out here In no way this is the right path where is it? Where's the next stop, man? ain't right. Let me just stop here for a minute, minute though. So, sitting position. It is important because it allows you to put more focus on, let's say, breathing as an instance, right? So what you want to do is you want to have your legs sort of crossed, you know, like this sort of right and the main purpose is to put weight on your main skeleton like pressure right so you don't want to forcefully have a straight back you want to ease in to yourself let the weight 
move down your body. So you want your head to be sort of leaning forward, letting the weight spread out evenly so you don't feel any strain. And what you want to do with your hands is just to gently place them on your knees. You don't want to do this like 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 that maneuver doing this is probably just gonna distract you from your meditation unless doing this with your hand is your meditation but that would be strange to say the least I, I'd say at least yeah it'd be kind of strange And last thing we're going to talk about today is, you know, a simple form of meditation. Oh, I'm going to have to go this way. And we're going to quickly go through walking meditation. So what is walking meditation? Well, when you're out and about walking, taking a stroll, let's say, you can actually meditate. And what are you meditating on when you're walking? Well, for starters, you could meditate on your breathing if you'd want. Or what I believe is easier is meditating on your walking. You know, how each step follows the next. And then, you know, uh, expanding that would be to be aware of the air and the outside generally and you can do these sorts these sorts of meditations nearly anywhere you know you could do like music meditation being aware of all the instruments and the rhythm that they're playing at you could do I don't know, a swimming meditation sounds like a good fun idea. Running meditation might be a little hard because of the strength, but you could definitely meditate after a good run. What else? Uh, there's probably some gentler meditations you could do. There might be group meditations, but I'm not sure. Talking meditation seems like a, an interesting thing. So, what have we learned today? Well, meditation is focus, and focus is awareness. Sort of. And uh, we use these tools as Buddhists, right? to become more aware of our surroundings and by becoming more aware we can make more uh, well I'd call them like more sound decisions more rational thoughts a more for us at least a more grown up way to live by just simply being aware oh, yes this is definitely the way I needed to go early and uh, you know Awareness is awareness, and awareness is a part of meditation. And you know how to deal with your thoughts, how to meditate in you know regular scenarios, and uh, also how you should sit when meditating. So that's probably gonna be it for today. This is the last episode of. The English uh, season, let's say. And next season is coming back at you in February, at the end of it, February. 
in Swedish, of course. We're switching every year. I'll also be posting a uh, sort of a compilation of all the intros that I've made for each episode uh, since the beginning till now on my second channel. Which is a sort of fun thing, I guess. Something to have in mind when meditating is to be aware that it's a process, right? It's not something that you just do and feel free or any, any of that. Because meditation is not a remedy or you know, some sort of cure for all or anything like that. It's, it's just a way to balance your life and the way I see is that a lot of people meditate all the time without even thinking about it just by focusing on themselves and their actions and the world around them they're actually doing Buddhist things without even knowing about it And I feel personally that you can sort of tell who is aware of their surroundings, their friends, family, you know, just generally people around them and their own well-being. And these are the people that act more like Buddhists and probably in my eyes are probably happier for it. But anyhow, that is it for today's episode. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next episode, we will see what it's going to be about in two months in Swedish. And for your English viewers, I'll see you in February of 2025. But until then, have a good night's sleep. And thanks.